Uh... Welcome! Another edition of MP on the MP, and today I'm actually going to be going on the MPC Studio. Uh, one of my very first beats ever made within the MPC Studio software, which is going to be a journey for me because I'm stubborn and I like to use my Excel for everything. But today I made a bit of a different beat and I'm really excited about how it came out. I composed all the musical elements in contact and using a chord generator and we're going to get into it today. I use a really dope synth bass, a very slow tempo, I think 60 BPM. So it's basically like some experimental shit that came out kind of cool. So rock with me. Let's do it. Another edition of MP on the MP, and today is going to be a little different, especially for me. And, uh, step one of this episode is bye bye, Excel. We're going to do some new shit today. Ha! I'm going to show you a little beat that I made in the MPC studio, uh, all kind of original sounds using my pad tie and some contact libraries. I love making boom bap shit, don't get me wrong, that's like my signature sound. But I love all types of music, I like all types of production, and sometimes I make beats that fit the mood that I'm in and this is definitely some different shit that, that came out kind of cool so let's get into it. Let's start with the drums. Okay, I'm gonna go through my drum sounds now for this particular beat that I have in MPC Studio. I got my little kick, my big kick, both from Pad Thai, Pad Thai snare, and the rest are some live drums chopped up. Okay, that's another thing I want to talk about. So I have four different hi-hats chopped up, uh, live hi-hats. And I must say that hi-hats, man, that should be a whole other episode we'll do in the future. But if you want to have movement and have natural feel in your drum programming and you want to use hi-hats, man, does it make a difference to have different actual hi-hats with different velocities, the way they're hit, and to use them. Even if you're doing some simple 4-4 boom bap shit where you do the 16 note hi-hat, even if each one sounds different, I guarantee you it will provide more natural results for your programming. Um, so yeah, I have a bunch of different hi-hats which will definitely make a difference in the groove, especially because it's hi-hat heavy. I'm gonna play it in a, in a minute and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. I also have some kicks with some cymbals in them. Basically, I chopped up a live break and then put on some heavier drums underneath is basically the gist of it. And I have an 808. Uh, I think it's a from one of Cardiac's kits, so shout to him. It's called Start It Up 808, and I have that. The one cool thing about with uh, slower tempos is that it's more room for drums to really smack. So that's where having tight big low end in your kicks and, and you know when your snares hitting is important you can really have actually room for them to breathe in all their glory so let's play the drum groove real quick oh just on another side note for people that are into audio sound design mixing i have a lot of people asking about mixing on this chain i actually have a bunch of plugins on my drums starting with my buddies a universal audio. I have the Studer A800, which is a tape saturation plugin. Man, does these, these things are heavy. They add a lot of character to your drums. You have to be careful because they're very aggressive. And at first, when I got them, I was putting them on everything, thinking it was helping, and they are helping, but they add a lot of low end, is basically what I'm saying. So you have to be careful. So I have that on the chain, followed by the Pultec EQ, which is another universal audio equalizer. And then I have an LA2 compressor. Sometimes I do a lot of weird shit and I go back and I'm like, why did I do that? But in that moment, I just felt like doing it. Compression on drums is always a tricky thing because it will take the snap and the life out of them. But also sometimes if you don't need things to knock like crazy, they do provide a glue and an interesting tone. Especially because I have all these different drums together, a compressor will kind of bring it all in the same universe and make it sound like it's the same kit. So there's pros and cons to compression. Compression could be a whole other episode. I still don't even understand compression all the time. I just know that I'm very careful with it. I think for the most part, that's what I have on the drums. Yeah, so let's play the drum groove that I did.
So as you can hear, it's kind of like on some double time shit, but what, what I think is so dope about it, I never had no beef with double time tempos or even slower tempos, is the fact that it's the drum choices um, that make or break the feel to me. And because I got my own sample of drums, I really like the bounce and the feel of it, especially with all the live hats, it gives it a real live feel. And then I have some rolls with the snares and the mid. So those are the drums. I started with those. I usually always start with drums. I don't recommend it all the time because you can corner yourself into chasing sam samples and sounds to fit your drums and never actually make a beat. But me and Shiloh always talk about this. We like to kind of have our head nodding while we're looking for music samples, playing stuff. It kind of puts you in a vibe. So uh, I usually start with the drums. So now we're going to go into kind of some original composition uh, mode, which people ask me about as well. They're like, yo, how do you replay samples? How do you do stuff from scratch? First of all, I'm not a musician. I don't know how to replay samples. Obviously, I can listen to something and try my best to create, you know, a bass line or a melody in the ballpark. But I definitely wouldn't consider myself a replayer of samples, you know, at a high level. Uh, I have amazing musicians in my crew that can definitely do that if I need it. So I'm going to go to one of my favorite things ever in life when it comes to constructing chord melodies. And I'm going to give away one of my uh, secret tools right now. And here she is in all her glory. Cthulhu. I don't even know if I'm saying it right because I don't know how to pronounce it. No, that's right. Cthulhu? It's Cthulhu. Okay. So, Cthulhu, Marco, what's Cthulhu? Cthulhu is a chord generator, okay? I see so many people arguing about these things online, and, you know, musicians that, you know, are amazing at chords, being like, learn how to play chords, and it's fuck all that. I'm not a musician, sometimes I just need three chords to inspire me to make a beat, and if there's something like this that does it, I'm gonna use it, and I have used it. And what's dope is there's all these, uh, I'll go to the pull down menu real quick, there's all these presets and keys and scales. So, you know, if you have something in D minor that you want to use, there's like D minor. See, I got all these things. There's other companies will then make chord presets for it. And basically it's just super helpful. If you have to make a beat where you want to compose something and you're not the greatest at chords, this will put you in, the, in a great zone. So I have this chord pack that somebody made uh, that has kind of like Neo soul chords. So that's what I used for the beat uh, with a, a contact piano. Let's go to it right now. Where are you, contact? Here you are. I'm one of my favorite things in the world. Shouts to Native Instruments. My contact libraries are pretty intense, as you can see. And I'm going to go to my favorite piano of all time. I keep trying to find other pianos to change it up, but this upright piano with overtones is my go-to. Uh... And I also layered the, the piano with two other sounds in contact. That's the dope thing is that you can put a bunch of instruments so when you trigger the keyboard, it's playing, you know, the same chord but with different instruments. And I have, I have a Neo Soul Suitcase Fender Rhodes, another dope thing that I use. And an organ from the contact library. Yeah, RIP Mr. Preston was the preset. So basically, I have a piano, a Fender Rhodes, and an organ stacked together to use for my chord progression, okay? Now, the first thing I do when I start loading contact sounds is I obliterate them with processing because I'm a guy that comes from the crates. I like to hear dust, static, filtering. So I have a little chain of plugins for them, and I will show you all of them right now, starting with a Waves plugin called GW Piano Centric, which is real dope. Basically, it's like a filter. Uh, it's got delay, it's got a doubler. I don't know, I usually like putting it on pianos to roll off the high end, or if you want to make it more high endy. So, shouts to Waves. Uh, and then I have it going into a bus with this fucking beast right here. The ATR by Universal Audio, it's another tape plugin, and I use a preset called Sunbake Cassette, which is literally insanity. It just basically makes it sound like a cassette that was 
set on fire and burnt. So I definitely use that plugin and that preset, but I toned back because the noise and a lot of the wow and the flutter uh, is very intense. And I don't like my sounds to warble when you hear them. I like a little bit, a little bit, but not a lot. When I first started getting these plugins, I was using them all the time. And I'm noticing a lot of sound designers are using them to make contact sound sound, but it kind of gives me a headache after a while. The flutter needs to be lower for me personally, my taste and the wow. Uh, and then I have it going through the studer again, which is like tape on tape. And then I got a LA two way compressor, the legacy version, just to kind of glue things together. And then I have some effects in this what I got here? I got the H Reverb. This is an old beat because I have so many other plugins now that I would have used instead. H Delay. So yeah, let's play the, the piano sounds. So you can see it's kind of crunchy and lo-fi and I kind of wanted to go for that sound right off the bat. Uh, there's not a lot of low end in this piano. I'm using it more for a vibe than for it to be really a piano because I guess if you were going to record a real piano it would have tons of low end and this basically, it basically sounds like I filtered out the lows which is what I did. So, uh, with Cthulhu like I said, you got all these chords. And I kind of twiddled around until, did you see that? I just flame spit onto my hand, that was amazing. It's too bad this wasn't in slow-mo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the dope thing about Cthulhu, like I said, is that you have all these chords mapped out. But what's super dope, once again, because I'm gonna rep for all the producers that don't come from a music theory background, where they're like, play D sharp, and you're like, I don't know what that is. So I'm one of those guys, so if I have a chord, in Cthulhu, I'm gonna go back to Cthulhu real quick. The dope thing about Cthulhu is that, yeah, you might be cheating a bit by getting some help using some chords, but guess what? It's also fucking educational because, you know, if, if I'm playing a chord, it tells you it's C major suspended fourth, whatever that is, and it shows you all the notes. So guess what? Slowly over time as you use this, you get to learn about chords and also for people that have a hard time with your bass lines, what's fire is that when you're hitting a chord and you know all the notes, you know all the bass notes on the keyboard will be in tune with the chord because you can see them. So even if you know it helps you learn, I think that's a, a super powerful tool. And it actually helps me write more interesting bass lines because I might not think that note is in tune with that chord and now I know exactly what's going where and it helps me make better music and at the end of the day that's all i care about don't care how i get there as long as i get there and it's fire i will use whatever i need to use uh, in the process so so i think that's the progression i ended up starting with so So let's go to it and play it real quick. I move mad slow in this program, so we're gonna go to the mixer. Real simple chord progression, real open, real spacey, nothing crazy. Uh, just helped me get into a vibe for the rest of the beat. So the first thing I did is when I played those chords is I was like, before I even get to melody, uh, which I don't even think there is a lot of super melody on this beat, is I wanted to fucking go with the bass. I've just heard like some huge bass stuff happening. So uh, let's go to the bass sound that I used real quick. Ah. 
Ooh, I like that. I like the sounds of that. All right. So, what did I use bass wise? Okay, Shouts to Native Instruments, Monarch. And the bass patch was called Rounded. I fucking love synth bass. If I could use it in every beat, I would, but I, I don't. But this one, it was appropriate. That's why I used it. So it was nice and slow and there was room for it to breathe. So I used the Monarch rounded bass preset and I have some plugins on it too to make it a little beefier, which I'll show you right now. Which was these Pultec EQs by Universal Audio. This was the Pultec EQ P-1A Legacy and they have a preset called Bass Big and Fat. So you know I'm just gonna use that. Sometimes you gotta tone back because they're really aggressive, so if the lows are too high, but you just kinda you gotta tweak things to the beat, so. And then I have, I think this is a Waves plugin. Shiloh is One Knob Waves, yes. I think One Knob is made by Waves. It's called Fatter, which is what every hip hop producer always wants to see written on a plugin, Fatter. So I just put that on and made it a little beefier. So that's pretty much the core of the bass line minus some turnaround notes. Let's play all three together. I'll bring them in starting with the drums. So once again, this is one of the this is one of those beats where space is a lot of space, and because of that, certain instruments can really shine. Like that synth bass is like out there in this beat. I have it definitely loud, but because the chords aren't so busy, I can you know you can really kind of zone in on the bass when it comes in, and it feels super heavy plus the tempo. So. It's just, it's just a matter of figuring out space and vibe and putting things in the right place and it just has a huge feel that synth bass, so I liked it. Okay, so I had the drums, I have the, the chords, and I had my bass line, so now I need to add some extra flavor. So I took this Ancient Vokes uh, sound from my Pad Thai kit, which is like a really weird... And I modulated it. So I put it on 16 levels and I put a crazy plugin on it. Let's go to it right now. From Waves, once again, called the Meta Filter. And I am a huge fan of the Meta Filter preset called Wah Wah Wah, which makes things basically sound like Wah Wah. It's like a filter and does some crazy things. And then I have the REQ and I just took out literally all the low end and just made it high endy because there was a lot of rumble in the sample and the low end and I didn't want any of that to interfere. I just wanted the high end parts of the voices. So basically I took this voice to try and make it work duck down as a vibe thing so it's kind of like a complimentary sound because I'm going to play it by itself right now and it sounds really crazy isolated. But that's the beauty of things. It's not ever meant to be played by itself. Um, so I'm gonna play it by itself so you can hear the insanity. Um, but when I combine it with the beat and the layers, it adds texture, it adds a vibe. So let's play it soloed. Where is it? And I got some crazy delay and reverb on it, so. Even 
listening to it right now, I'm like, that sounds crazy. But in the scheme of things, I'm going to bring it in with the beat right now. Sometimes you do some weird shit and then when everything's playing together it just makes sense and very lightly in the mix of things it just adds a vibe to it kind of like a spooky little choir in the background so shouts to my pad thai kids marcopolobeats.com so then i had let's go to the next sound which is another weird sound <laughs> It's actually a Fender Road sound from my Pad Thai kit uh, called Pretty Road. And once again, I super modulated it with the Meta Filter again and the EQ once again. And it looks. I'm gonna play it soloed. Shiloh, what does that sound like? <laughs> Yo, sometimes I laugh at this shit in my beats, I'm not gonna lie, I'm like, what the fuck is that? But in the mix of things, it, it was, I guess it was important, you know, to build the, the vibe, so. I think I had that really low, because that shit just sound crazy, I'm gonna play it now. Before the last element, which was some string, so let's play everything together one more time. Uh... <laughs> Okay, so ve very low in the mix. Those are kind of, that sound is pretty fucking obnoxious and I have it kind of low in the mix just to fill up a little bit of space at the end of the beat where it's emptier. So basically I felt like that vibe right there was good for like the verse part. So I was like, I need something for a hook. And I decided to go for some strings, some good old contact strings. So let's go over there real quick. How is it? There it is. Cinematic strings. Okay, I used the second violins all spot. 1.5 was the patch. <clears throat> Usually when I'm using strings from libraries, I put delays and reverbs and use filters and once again, uh, try and dirty up the sounds. That's the key for me when I'm using virtual instruments is how can I make them sound like all messed up. In a good way, of course. I'm gonna play it solo.
that's some different shit right there, but I like it. I like it. I trusted my ears when I was writing the string line. I went with some very high notes so you could hear it. Sometimes it's not about the right notes or musical theory. It's about in the, in the, the scheme of your beat, what stands out to the listener. And sometimes some, playing something simple is more effective than something super complex. And I just went with the overall vibe on this beat of simplicity and space and really hard drums. And the bass line kind of is one of the... For me, the highlights of the beat, it just comes in so crazy, and uh, yeah, it was cool. I never made really a beat at this tempo before, or that kind of bounce, and I definitely feel like using the studio software inspired some new flavor for me and how I would have produced. I think I probably would have did it differently on the XL, and that's one of the positives of learning new things, is being open-minded and, and getting out of your comfort zone, and you know, because when I'm on the XL, um, sometimes I get stuck with doing the same drum patterns and this kind of forces you to think differently and you get really dope results. So for anyone that's like hard-headed about changing their setup, I highly suggest you open your mind. You know what I'm saying? There's more to it than just using this or using that. There's no right way. You should definitely try and mess with all types of things because it'll help your production at the end of the day. You know, you can even apply it to uh, so many different things. Even if you end up going back to a sampler like I do, it still opens my mind that I can make some interesting things. And to me, I don't know about y'all producers, I want to show my versatility. I don't want to be a one-trick pony ever in my life. You might know know me for some hardcore boom bap shit, but I could do all types of shit. And very soon you will hear that on my new beat tape. So MP on the MP. MP on the MPC studio this time. Uh, I hope you took something from it. Um... So that wraps up another edition of MP on the MP or MP on the MP Studio. Today we got a little different. Uh, for me especially, I like to push myself because straight up after 20 years of making beats, I get bored. And it's very important for me to try different things. Sometimes they don't get used for anything and sometimes they turn into really new cool things. So I like to learn new technology and push myself to do different shit all the time. I highly encourage you to do the same thing. Because sometimes routine and the things you do over and over again can be your death as a as a musician, as a producer. And for me, I'm always into learning stuff. It might not always work, but it's fun to try and learn. So this was definitely an episode where I experimented a bit. And hopefully you took something from it. Thanks for tuning in. I'm out.